All right, today we have a really interesting problem, which is looking at two DFAs, D1 and D2, and they have a certain number of states, a certain number of final states. So D1 has N1 states, F1 final states, D2 has N2 states, and F2 final. Now we're going to form the DFA D such that L of D is the union of the two languages of the two DFAs. So in general, what we will need is to use the product construction. So if we use the product construction to make the DFA D, then we will uh, we'll have the DFA D, which is the union of the two DFA's languages. Now the question we want to answer is, how many final states does the DFA D have? Just knowing the number of states in the two original machines and the number of final states in them. So Let's go to thinking about what does the final states formed mean. So if we look at the final states, remember that it's all the states of the form Q1, Q2, such that Q1 is a final state of the original, or Q2 is a final state of the other one. And we have an or here because we have union. So now all that we are really needing to do here is what is the cardinality of this set of final states? How many final states are in here? So notice here, so if Q1 is final, then what do we need to know about Q2? Well, because it's or, we don't care how many final states there are. So then the uh, number of states in F with Q1 is the number of states number of states in the DFA D2 because for Q1 well I don't care which second state is attached to the Q1 state because we've already met the condition for being a final state. So the number of states in F with Q1 in them is, the, is every single state in D2, because we just don't care which one it is. So that means that the number of states that are in this, in this set F right here that have any final state from Q1 in it is the number of final states in the first one, which is F1, times the number of states in the second one, which is n2. So this right here is the number of states um, in f with some final state from the first DFA d1. But we can have the exact same type of situation if we have Q2 being a final state and Q1 being any state of the first machine. So we need to add on, well, how many final states are in the second machine, which is F2, and how many states are in the first machine, because we got to do the exact same type of calculation, but just switch this, the machines around. So F2 times N1. So these are the, let's see, it's the number of states in F. So paste the number of states in F with some final state from D2 this time. And some students will look at that and say, yeah, that's the number of, of uh, final states. But the thing we should consider here is, what about the states that are both final? So what if, say, Q1 and Q2 are final? But that means that they will appear in here because F1 was, we're counting the states from the first machine's final states, and it'll appear in this calculation here. So what we're actually doing is we're double counting the pairs right here where both of the states are final. So we need to subtract the number of states that are fine that are final in both machines. So number of states in F 
that are both final in D1 and D2? Well, the ones that are both final, well, they have to have the first one being final, which is F1 possibilities, and they have to have the second one being final, and they're independent of each other, so we have times F2 here. And, and that's all we need to do, because all the other possibilities are only counted once. So the number of final states is F1 times the number of states in the second one, plus the number of final states in the second one times the number of states in the first, minus the, num the product of the number of final states in both. So I hope that was interesting. Um, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment down below to tell me uh, any other questions that you have about this. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.